So if you've ever seen like any video on my channel, you know I'm a big fan of NZXT lighting. I almost got the S340 Elite when I moved back to a case from a test bench, almost, but I got the Meshify C instead. Recently, I saw the H510 Elite during some CES coverage and it was an absolute showstopper. So today I've got one to take a look at in the matte white finish and my main gaming and editing rig that you see on camera all the time is potentially getting a new home. You ready? Let's go. This video is brought to you by Mayflower Electronics, makers of the Mayflower Arc gaming DAC amp for Windows, Mac, Linux, and the PS4. Offering a 2496 DAC, a mic input, and a full watt of power at 32 ohms in a single unit, the Arc can power even your most challenging headphones. It's driverless, handmade here in the US, carries a 10 year warranty, and right now through July 31st, you can use code BADSEEDTECH to save 5% off your purchase. Check out the Arc at MayflowerElectronics.com. Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad Seed Tech, and today we're taking a look at the H. 510 Elite Compact Mid Tower Case from NZXT. For transparency, this was sent out for review, but as you should know by now, it doesn't affect my review in any way. The H510 Elite leads the new refresh, which also includes the baseline H510 at $69.99 and the H510i at $99.99. The I designation indicates the newly revised NZXT smart device, and the H510 Elite expands on that design by including the smoke tempered glass front panel as well as two 140mm Air 2 RGB fans. You also lose one RGB strip moving from the H510i to the H510 Elite, which is odd. The Elite, which comes in either matte white or matte black, is the flagship and packs some flagship pricing too at $149.99 outside the US and a whopping $169.99 here in the US thanks to the new import tariffs. This is an expensive case and you're paying for aesthetics. So if aesthetics aren't important to you and you think it's silly to spend money on stuff like that, this video is probably not for you. The updated smart device will operate two independent channels of RGB lighting and handle up to three independent channels of voltage regulated or PWM fans. It also requires SATA power and a free USB 2 header on your motherboard. If you're planning on running an X61 or X62 for cooling like I do, you will need an additional USB 2 header as well. So keep that in mind when you're shopping motherboards. Control for the smart unit is handled by cam software it's come a really long way it's totally stable and functional i use it every day on my main gaming and editing pc and it's solid if there was any issue with it at all i would have no problem telling you about it other fan locations here include a single 120 140 in the roof and a 120 millimeter exhaust in the rear you do get a rear 120 exhaust included here but it's the case designation so no rgb an odd exclusion for an elite model at this price all versions also include the seamless smoke tempered glass side panel as well that has no visible hardware, it mounts using this peg system, and a single captive thumb screw. The Elite ups the ante with the smoked front glass panel to match. This can be removed if you need access, but is normally secured with a small screw on each side. The windows do not extend floor to ceiling, but they stop at the base. It looks, from the right angle, like a display case sitting on top of a pedestal. It's a gorgeous look. For top I.O., you get one USB 3.1 Type-A and one USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C, plus a single audio header that has a splitter if need be. Honestly, I would have preferred to see individual audio ports from my mic and headphone and an additional USB type A. As for cooling, this will support a 240 or a 280 millimeter rad in the front of the case. I'll be using the X62, it's a 280 millimeter all-in-one unit that I've had for ages. The front is the only place this will fit, it only goes in one way and they have this removable bracket where you can assemble your fans and your rad outside of the case and just slide it back in, it's really easy. You have to be careful here because the manual actually shows to do the radiator, the fans and then the bracket. When you put it together like that though, not only does it obscure the light rings on the front of the fans, it also doesn't fit in the case. So the move here is to sandwich the bracket in between the fans and the radiator. You also have to situate the rad with the hoses up as there's about a one to two millimeter clearance issue if you try to route them down. Outside of those two conditions, installing here is a breeze. This bracket is nice. For drives, you'll get two SSD mounts on the rear of the motherboard tray and an additional drive cage in the basement. There are no convenience features here on this lower drive cage. There's no sleds or anything like that. If you wanna put stuff in and out of this, you have to unscrew it, remove it, physically screw the drive in and then put it back in. You can't fit up to three, three and a half inch drives here or one two and a half inch SSD 
and two three and a half inch hard drives. In a missed opportunity here, they could have drilled SSD mount holes in the other side as well, allowing you to mount one additional drive inverted. You can mount SSDs on the PSU shroud as well, but they require additional drive sleds that aren't included. So if your system runs purely SSDs, you're gonna be limited to three here, which is really rough at this price point. One of the major concerns I had moving from the Mesh FI C to the H510 Elite was obviously airflow. The glass structure immediately gives the impression of a choking hazard, but if you watched any of the videos for the H500, you'll find the design here to be very similar. So you have a full length filtered intake that runs along the outside panel. The bottom is also open, filtered as well, and the feet make the case sit high enough to where it can really draw air in through the bottom as well, provided you're not choking it out with carpet. And there's a fairly large recess between the glass and the front of the fan, so this whole area up front is designed to take advantage of this. The other area that concerned me was losing the second 140 millimeter fan fan location in the roof. So I decided to temperature and noise test my Mesh FI C before teardown and then run the same test on the completed build in the H510 Elite. To some degree, you're gonna need to take this next part with a grain of salt here because the Mesh FI not only has an extra 140 mil fan in the roof, but the rear exhaust fan in the Meshify is the air model, so it's PWM controlled. If you're looking for something a lot more scientific, you should probably head over to Gamers Nexus. Testbed is a D-litted 8700K overclocked to five gigahertz, an RZ370 Gaming 5, 32 gig of Trident RGB at 3200, and an EVGA 1080 Ti running stock clocks. In both cases, the CPU was cooled by the X62 using the performance preset in the cam software, and all the additional fans were linked up running off the fan splitter. In the Meshify, 10 minutes, Prime 95, the CPU hit 87 on the hottest core with the others holding right around 83 to 84. In Furmark torture testing, the GPU hit a max of 71 degrees. Moving to the H510 Elite, we saw the CPU hit 91 on the hottest core with the others averaging around 88 degrees. GPU and Furmark here hit a max of 73 degrees. In the interest of trying to be as fair as possible, I did go ahead and populate that top spot in the ceiling with an additional NZXT 140 millimeter fan. In terms of noise, the H510 Elite has that rear exhaust fan working against it. That's a voltage controlled fan so it seems to run at the same speed no matter what preset you have it on so silent or performance doesn't matter runs at the same speed makes the same noise so the completed build runs about three to four decibels higher than the build in the Meshify. Again, it's not the most scientific test, but it would be tough for any case really to be able to beat the amount of airflow coming into the radiator of the Meshify. Whether it's more restrictive intake or a smaller path for air to exit, Meshify takes it. In terms of the build process itself, it was really straightforward. Plenty of room to route cables on the top of the motherboard as well as on the lower side. There's actually tons of room here for power and SATA cables as well. I just can't shake the fact that they could have included two additional SSD trays for mounting here. There is a spot too for vertical GPU mount the riser kit's not included and it gets super close to that glass. If you're on air, I definitely don't recommend vertically mounting the GPU and I don't think you would find anyone out there that would recommend that you do that. So this is my first NZXT build and the cable routing bar here is legit. It provides a much cleaner look than I can achieve through traditional grommets. Rear cable routing here is pretty solid too. There's this nice channel system, couple of Velcro straps and plenty of tie down spots. Clearly I have a lot more work to do on cable management here. Luckily there's plenty of space to just cram stuff in the basement out of sight. Worth noting here too, I used a short power supply. Long power supplies will fit fine. If you do want to expand the RGB in this case, it's important to note that the smart device will support three additional RGB strips off the channel that's running the strip and up to three additional fans, assuming you can find a spot for that fifth one off the fan channel. If you want to add something that's not an RGB strip or a fan, something like a cable chrome kit or an underglow kit, you can do that, but you're gonna have to upgrade from that smart device that's included to a standalone Hue 2 module. This module is magnetic. It'll fit right on top of the drive tray down there. In the basement really is the only room for this. There's not really a place on the rear of the motherboard tray for it. And just be aware that if you do this, you're gonna have to run additional power off your power supply from Molex. So I'm not a big fan of the lack of SSD mounting locations, the limited front IO, the fact that the rear exhaust is not an air RGB fan, and the lack of the additional spot in the roof to put another 140 millimeter fan. I really like the all steel and glass construction. I love the radiator mounting bracket. I love all the cable routing channels on the back. And I really like all the access around the motherboard when you're building. I gotta say, I'm spoiled by the mesh if I see. It's not perfect. The glass panel system could really use a revision and some of the routing from the motherboard can be challenging the top and the bottom, but the amount of gear it can hold for its footprint is crazy. Five total SSD spots and room for five fans. There's no flash 
there's no RGB, so if you compare it to the H510 in its base form, it's also $30 more expensive as well. With the H510 Elite, what you're paying for here is the look. It's not a bad case by any stretch. It just feels like what it is, a $70 or $80 case loaded with expensive dress-up parts. In the US, you're paying $100 over the baseline H510 for a smart device with limited functionality versus the U2, two RGB fans, a tempered glass front panel, and a light strip, which depending on how much of an emphasis you put on looks could or could not constitute a value. RGB accessories for most major manufacturers aren't cheap. The Hue 2 standalone module itself is $70. I have personally spent a small fortune outfitting the Meshify C with literally the same dress-up parts. Tempered glass and RGB just pushes up the price tag. Fractal Design's S2 Vision case is almost $100 more than the base model S2, fetching almost $240. And of course, you also have to weigh in the impact of the tariff here. It'll be really interesting to see how this continues to affect US pricing. Nonetheless, if you're chasing an aesthetic, this is a great look, and it's the only place to get it. Big thanks to NZXT for sending this out for review. Not sure when we're gonna see wide availability on this thing, so I'll put whatever links I have down in the description any questions over anything I covered today, hit me up in the comments or drop by the Discord. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, stay up.